The Discraft Battle Pack was a super fun battle between two very impressive and iconic discs. We had the Zone Banger Concept versus the Zone Ringer Concept. You guys, the fans of Disc Golf, got to vote on which mold would Discraft move forward with and do a full production run of. What we have here today is the result of the voting. You guys decided that you would like Discraft to run the Zone Banger Concept. And that's exactly what I have to show you guys today. We've got the Zone Banger GT in the ESP plastic. We'll also be comparing it to the test flight version, this nice more crystal red one, and then we'll be comparing it to the ESP one. I'd be lying if I told you guys I wasn't disappointed that this disc won. I am a massive fan of the Zinger, the Zone Ringer. But what I'm left with, because of you guys, is the Zanger. And I'm not gonna lie if I didn't say that, didn't displease me at least a little bit. But what we're gonna do today is see how the stock run flies versus the test flight. So we'll throw the test flight first. Nice and straight with a little dump at the end. We are dealing with a pretty brisk headwind. Now let's see how this ESP guy flies. Pretty beefy, actually surprisingly beefy. The Zone Ringer, the Zinger, is even more overstable. And I know Ezra Haderhold and a couple other Discraft pros are bagging the Zinger, but the Zinger actually has some shocking stability to it. And although I am slightly disappointed that the Zinger beat out the Zinger in the voting, I do think there was a little corruption in the voting. I think Foundation Disc Golf was unnecessarily pushing the Zinger so hard that it actually wound up winning. They were pushing the voting for the Zanger. And aside from me, there weren't really many other people consistently advocating for the Zinger. Kind of a David versus Goliath kind of situation when you've got little old Iceberg TV rooting for one and Goliath Foundation Disc Golf rooting for the other. I, th I think you can see based on the results <laughs> how that wound up working out for me. But I think what most people are gonna be using these for is approaching the basket. So we've got two options here. We've got one short basket and one long basket. We'll go long and then we'll go short. Let's throw the ESP first. Oh, that's got a lot more stability and torque resistance than I expected. I'm gonna be totally honest, I'm pretty surprised by how beefy these are. Let's go for the short. So the way I would describe the flight of these is stable, but not dumpy. Not quite as dumpy or as a tactic, a harp or an A2, a little bit more pushy. And that makes them really ideal for long flexing backhand shots. Something where you can get a really big pan all the way down and you're not gonna get that huge swing at the end. And you're not definitely not gonna get as big of a skip as some of those other discs I've already mentioned. So let's throw them up in the air with a little bit of Anheuser. That lands really, really soft. Pro players and a lot of the Masters players and players with a lot more experience really like to think about the way that the disc actually lands on the ground. And these are landing not only really slow, but also really soft and flat, especially on that Anheuser line. Let's see how the ESP flies on that same line. That stability is very impressive and it's a lot more stable than I expected it to be. And now let's see how they perform on a forehand line. I'm really curious how they perform on a forehand Anheuser line with a good bit of power. I think most people want their stable putters to be able to handle a forehand throw. So I'm gonna throw these nice and hard. We'll throw the test flight first and then we'll throw the ESP, the new one. Man, just very, very pushy but landing so flat and so soft. This would be a really, really nice approach disc. It's not quite as droppy as a Berg and doesn't quite land as soft as a Berg, but I would go as far as to say that I would consider this the closest thing Discraft has to a Berg. So if you love the Berg, but you don't like Castaplast, this is gonna be a really good option for you. Look at that nice flex, very dependable. Just landing nice and soft and flat. That's really a nice upshot disc. And although I'm definitely gonna remain on Team Zinger, I do think I may have been a little bit too harsh on Team Zanger uh, when I was originally testing these discs. And 
Although I don't think it's the better of the two, I do think it's a fine disc and I expect to find it into a lot of different players' bags. And this will be our last shot of the day. We're gonna throw two forehand hyzer up shots towards this basket just under the tree here. That tree there is going to block any flat shots and any Anheuser shots. So it's a really good time to see how they land into the hill on a hyzer. Do they stand up and roll or do they find a way to sit down? We'll go with the test flight and then the first run ESP. It's right into the green and it finds a way to sit, find its way to flat and, and sit there. And that's what you really want from a good reliable upshot disc. And I'm not sure if anyone has said this yet, but I'm going to coin the term Discraft Berg. I will go out on a limb and say that this is the Discraft Berg. As far as any Discraft disc that flies like a Berg, that's the closest thing you're going to get. And the Berg is one of the most popular and successful upshot discs on the market. And that big thumb track, big puddle top style, it helps the disc fight the wind. It helps it come down with almost no speed and it helps it land flat. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section down below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.